Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to Mold 99. I have a very special friend joining this week's video and I'll throw it over to her in a moment to have a chat. First, let's pour this mold up. It took a lot of liquid, it was quite deceiving, but I poured it up, tipped it out and opened it up to reveal this really unique shaped mug. It tapers up at the top and is quite round and large at the base which means it will hold a lot for those playing along at home here is the mold if you're looking to get it for yourself but let's say hello to sarah connor ceramics who i collaborated with this week hi sarah thank you so much for joining us thank you for having me shelby i'm very excited to be here could you explain in a few words a bit about who you are and what you do i am make cute ceramics that I hope when people hold them they feel special, they feel loved, they feel warm and cozy. I love making ceramics that is someone's special cup. I got in by making moons, suns and moons. From that it just sort of went to like aliens because of the moons and the suns, I don't know. But then I just started making cryptid stuff. Like my favorite is Bigfoot. I absolutely love Bigfoot. It just sort of went from there. What is your creative background? My creative background is I started as a graphic designer. Um, actually, I started as a web designer. With web design, you will always get asked, well, can you just like zhuzh up my logo? So I got into graphic design from there. And then I had my second child kind of burn myself out in preparation to taking maternity leave. I just couldn't be in front of a computer. I didn't want to pick up a pencil. I was really depressed because I wasn't being creative. My husband bought me a slab of clay and a big piece of wood. And he was like, you don't have to be creative with paints and brushes and computers, like be creative with your hands. It was just a really kind, sweet thing that he did. And as soon as I touched that clay Shelby, like, I am not kidding you, I fell in love. I just started making like pinch pots. And then I, you know, went into my kitchen and just brought a bunch of my kitchen shit out and started like making slabs. And one of my aunties died and left me some money. I was told not to spend it on bills or anything like that. I was told to spend it on joy. And so that's how I bought my first kiln and my first wheel. I decided to spend it on something that would truly bring me joy, which I would never, ever have spent that money on myself otherwise. I thought it would be nice for you to share a bit about what you thought of the mold and what went into your design. Number one, as soon as I opened the box with the molds in them, I was so excited because the bottoms just had so much real estate. There's a couple of potters out there that just do like the coolest mug bottoms as like their signatures. I wanted to use the bottom predominantly rather than designs around them and then the de designs around would just be motifs to show off the bottom. So they're kind of like, secret cups. I really enjoyed the shape of the mugs themselves. Like I've drunk out of mine a couple of times and it's ridiculously satisfying to drink out of. I am so happy to hear that this shape is satisfying to drink from. Upon research of this piece, I found out that it's actually from the 1970s and it's called a no spill mug because it also came with a cork that positions in the top. It was targeted to a caravan or RV traveler because yeah, you don't spill your coffee from it apparently. That is such a cute idea. And the way that the, the rim is flared, you could get a cork in there really easily. Do you have three pieces of advice for beginner artists that are watching today? I would say for new artists, I think the most important thing is to find community and to build community around you because it just helps sharing ideas and bouncing off people. Being an artist, I think, can be quite lonely sometimes because it is very solitary. Having friends that you can proudly show off what you're working on and people that are happy for your successes. Something else I would say is keeping the joy in what you make. Hard when you're an artist because you think that you've got to make things that make other people happy because they're the people that would be buying your work. And it's a really slippery slope. That's one of the reasons why I left graphic design because I was making art for other people. I was making other people's dreams come true with their branding and their products and finding the joy in what you really love making will bring an audience that love what you do. Make what you want to make and if it's weird or if it, other people don't vibe with it, you just haven't found your people yet. Third point 
kind of ties into that and it is trying to be mindful that as a new artist it's gonna take a while to be able to sell your work if you don't sell your work that doesn't mean that it's not good work I see a lot of artists out there that you know they'll have a shop update and they don't sell out immediately and they're really disappointed by that it can put them off making new work because their past work didn't sell those three pieces of advice are kind of like puzzle pieces that come together making stuff you want to make creating a community and not putting your worth on whether or not you sold something it, it's so important it's just going to lead you down a path a more like mentally healthy path you know you don't end up being one of those tortured artist trope nobody wants to be the tortured artist we all want to be happy joyful little artists so i would say that's my advice that is such wonderful and extremely helpful advice from a successful artist i'm going to show you what i did with mine now and then i'll get sarah back in to share her final thoughts on her finished pieces so for my pieces I decided I was going to experiment with the new technique of course and I stained some clay colors so the way I did this was I added some colored stain from Chrysanthos to some clay and then rolled it out into these slabs I then cut out some little shapes and you're probably wondering what are you doing how does this actually relate to the piece that you revealed before that Sarah so carefully created such beautiful works on I am actually going to try out my very first slip inlay design. So slip inlay is where you inlay a design into your casting and then you add the slip and it just leaves a design on the outer surface of your slip casted piece. I have done slip inlay before, but that's where I painted directly onto the plaster mold. This time I'm actually constructing shapes and a design out of clay to build upon the plaster mold. And I decided I was going to do that by using four colors. So I've got my green, orange, red, and yellow. It's a bit hard to tell the difference between the orange and the yellow at this stage, but they will hopefully transform a fair bit once they're fired. The risk with this design is I'm not even sure if the slip inlaying is going to work, if they're going to hold their shape, if they're going to hold their color, if it's going to meld well with the clay body. This is the same clay that I use for my slip, but a lot of things can go wrong with the slip inlay and this is my first time actually trying it like this. So the way I actually put the design inside was I got this little spray bottle and sprayed it with water. The way slip casting works is that the plaster is dry and it's porous so that it pulls the moisture out of the clay leaving that solid shell that you see me working with when I open the mold. So I need to dampen the surface of the plaster so that the clay will actually stick and stay there without drying out heaps before I add the slip and this was actually really hard. It was really difficult. I've just shown the best bits but because the clay was drying out constantly as I was adding more flowers and adding to my design I had to keep spraying it constantly and it was so so time consuming I actually thought that this design would actually save time with the design principles but it's actually just as hard as painting a piece with an illustrative detail just because of how long and how much time you had to dedicate to getting it just right when I opened the mold I discovered that the inlay design wasn't pushed flush against the plaster so some of the slip had actually pushed underneath the design meaning that those flowers weren't as sharp as I intended them to be. That was a bit of a bummer for me because I thought I'd push them hard enough but that might just be because they dried out quicker and by the time the slip went in it's just sort of seeped in behind those flowers where I didn't want it to go. I thought I wasn't going to give up on this idea so I decided to have a go with a broader bigger shape which which actually was just, it just had the same issues, but I had a lot of fun with it. I made these Christmas baubles by cutting out some little stars and adding them to circles. I popped them around the mug and then I filled in the gaps with some tiny little stars. It's actually a fondant cutter. So I went to a cookie shop and I bought lots of fondant pusher cutters to use for the clay because the clay is essentially a big sheet of fondant that I'm working with. I opened it up and again, the slip had run into the design but I'm gonna work with it anyway. I didn't think that this was a loss because I figure the color behind the slip where it's gone into the design where I didn't want it, it might actually give a nice ghost imprint of the color. So it might not just be completely white. You might still be able to see the color depending on how rich it is after the firing. So then I bisque fired these pieces and I glazed them up. 
Sarah actually said to me when I was working on my pieces that I should leave one unglazed just to see how the matte texture looks. So that's what I did and then I popped them in the kiln and we'll tune back into Sarah for her finished results and then you'll hear about mine. Would you be able to share what your thoughts were of your finished pieces? All four came out, I was very happy with them but Two of the actual clay walls were way too thin and unfortunately they are just so delicate that they warped in really strange ways. One of them cracked a little bit. I should actually interject into that and say that Sarah was a little bit of a test dummy for this piece because I actually hadn't trialed it before sending them to her. So I wasn't sure what thickness the pieces should be to get the best results. So I sent her two thin ones and two thicker ones. I think mine also warped a little bit, especially around the rim and around the, the handle because I did do a hot fire of my kiln, which is when the kiln's not full of other pieces. It literally, I have a quite a big kiln. I would say it's double the size of yours, Shelby. It only had these four mugs in there. So that just means that the, the heat isn't dispersing evenly. Being a full kiln, it created a lot of hot spots. But considering that they still turned out really great. They're still really pretty. The colors are crazy vibrant. I absolutely love these Cryptid Club ones the way that they turned out. They took me so long to do. I always do way too much detail. I got to play with my underglaze pencil a little bit, which I'm just starting to learn and I really like. I love the idea of this like seemingly sweet little mugs. And then as you're drinking out of them, you're like showing, quickly showing the world like, hey, I'm also a weirdo. Cryptids, they're fun. I like monsters. Or I made the normal ones where it's a sun and a moon and you're just like a quirky girl that likes suns and moons and astrology and stuff, you know. I made one for the normies, the, the semi-normies, and then one for the, the weirdos. I absolutely love the finished results of your pieces. When you sent me the finished results, I was shocked that you actually made such a prominent design on the base, which is such an overlooked part of the pottery vessel, that you made that the whole feature of the mug and the way that you thought about the intention and design and the use of the mug that you would see the design as you're actually using the piece. I just think it's so inspired. I love what you did because it truly showcased the Sarah Connor ceramic style, which is a homage to mythology. Bright and vibrant colors, as well as a layering and illustrative design that truly pops on your work. It is so fantastic. And I'm so glad you could be a part of this video to showcase your style to everyone that's watching. Thanks, Shelby. I definitely, when I came up with the idea, I was like, am I a secret genius? Is this the best idea ever? And then I specifically didn't tell you because I was like, I'm, Shelby is just going to think I'm the cleverest little cookie in the world when she sees what I did. But then it's like, if they don't turn out and you can't use them, all of that work goes to waste because now the sun and the moon ones look quite boring if you can't see the bottoms of them. If you love Sarah's work as much as I do, I have actually linked her social media in the caption below. So make sure you give her a follow and share the love around. I wanted to say a massive thank you to Sarah for being a part of this video. It was such a joy to see how you reimagined these pieces. Thank you so much for having me, Shelby. This was honestly like just an absolute delight. It was so fun collaborating with you. It was so fun, you know, sharing little things back and forth privately because we were just excited by the process and the project. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. Okay, now that we have seen Sarah's finished pieces, it is now time for mine. So I opened up the kiln and wow, Okay, I, lo I love these. <laughs> these were such an unexpected result because I had no idea how vibrant the colors were going to be, what was going to happen, what that slip that leaked was going to do. But I really dig these. They're quite abstract and fun. Like there was intention behind the design and the layout of it. But I, I really like these. In particular, I love that they kind of look like Play-Doh blobs, which is probably like maybe a bit of an insult to my artistic abilities. But... <laughs> 
but <laughs> I kind of like that it feels so textural and so playful and like they are blobs of clay just making up a really cool design. I don't know, I dig it. I then did another kiln firing because I could only fit two or three of these in the kiln at once just due to how round and flat and tall they were. Let's have a look at the finished results. This is the one I left unglazed and it was actually quite interesting because the clay had a bit of a shimmer to it. Like it was always a little bit glittery, which is so strange because I glaze pretty much everything. And if it is left unglazed, it's usually underglazed. So you never really get that shimmer effect from it, which sort of adds that Christmassy feel the piece has. I am actually unsure whether I like the glazed or the unglazed better. I think I prefer the texture of the glazed. I did sand the unglazed piece down so that it's nice and soft to touch and it doesn't look as textural as it is. I'm undecided what I like better color wise and design wise. I absolutely love the flower inlay. I think it looks so, so great even the washed away flowers look so amazing and impressive and I also love how the slip has ran into that it just adds a little bit of texture and you can see a ghost imprint of where those petals were meant to be here is the design I did off camera I had a lot of fun with it and I think maybe just being off camera and being in my low state was really really helpful for the design of that piece otherwise I am just totally obsessed with this mold I think it's such a great shape as Sarah said it is so satisfying to hold it is such a a great vessel to work with and to design on. I hope you like this week's video. Let me know what you think of the mold in the comments. And here is your sneak peek to the 100th mystery mold of the Gumtree Mold series. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching.